The Roman Legacy from the Founding of Rome to the Fall of Constantinople. Segment 3 The Roman Republic until 27 BC Transition to Empire. The period following the Second Punic War marked a significant transformation in the Roman Republic, both internally and externally. With the victory over Carthage in 201 BC, Rome had established itself as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. Over the next two centuries, Rome continued its expansion, conquering territories in the Eastern Mediterranean, including Greece, Asia Minor, and parts of North Africa. The increasing wealth and expansion brought significant internal challenges, including political corruption, social inequality, and a series of civil wars. The influx of wealth from the provinces exacerbated the divide between the rich and the poor, leading to social unrest and the rise of populist leaders such as the Gracchi brothers, Tiberius and Gaius, who in the second century BC attempted to implement land reforms and other populist measures to address these issues. Their efforts, however, led to increased polarization and violence setting a precedent for the political instability that would characterize the late Republic. The late Republic also witnessed the rise of strong military leaders who commanded personal loyalty from their troops, a deviation from the traditional Republican values. This era saw the emergence of figures like Marius, Sulla, Pompey and Julius Caesar, each of whom played pivotal roles in the Republic's politics through military conquests and political maneuvering. Gaius Marius introduced significant military reforms, including the recruitment of landless citizens, which changed the Roman army from a semi-professional force to a more professional one. This move increased his soldiers' loyalty to him personally, rather than to the state. Lucius Cornelius Sulla was the first Roman general to march on Rome and seize power by force. His dictatorship, beginning in 82 BC, was marked by proscriptions, a series of political purges where his enemies were executed or exiled, and their properties confiscated. A triumvirate refers to a political regime dominated by three powerful individuals. The first triumvirate, unofficial and informal, was formed in 60 BC between Julius Caesar, Pompey and Crassus. This alliance was aimed at overcoming the senatorial and elite opposition by pooling their resources and influence, but fell apart after the death of Crassus and the growing rivalry between Caesar and Pompey. Crassus led a disastrous military expedition against the Parthian Empire. In 53 BC, he sought military glory and riches by invading Parthia, but met a formidable enemy. The Roman forces were decisively defeated at the Battle of Carrhae. The rivalry between the leaders often resulted in civil wars, most notably the conflict between Julius Caesar and Pompey. Julius Caesar's crossing of the Rubicon River in 49 BC marked the beginning of a civil war that ultimately led to his dictatorship and the end of the republican form of government. Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March in 44 BC was a desperate attempt by some senators to restore the Republic, but instead it plunged Rome into further strife. Caesar's reforms as dictator included the Julian calendar, which reformed the Roman calendar and is the precursor to the modern Gregorian calendar. His centralization of power set the precedent for the later Roman emperors, the power struggle that followed Caesar's death led to the formation of the Second Triumvirate in 43 BC by his heir Octavian, later Augustus, Mark Antony and Lepidus. Unlike the first, this was a legal institution which divided the Roman territories among the three for the purpose of restoring order and exacting vengeance on their mutual enemies. This period was marked by its own series of conflicts and political purges. The final phase of the Republic concluded with the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, where Octavian decisively defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra, 
leading to their suicides and Octavian's undisputed control over Rome. The Battle of Actium was a naval confrontation where Octavian's fleet, commanded by Agrippa, defeated the combined forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. This battle effectively ended the Roman Republic and cleared the path for Octavian to become the first Roman Emperor. In 27 BC, Octavian was granted the title Augustus by the Senate, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. This transition was characterized by the establishment of a more centralized and autocratic form of governance under Augustus, signaling a new era in Roman history. Segment 4 The Roman Empire From Augustus to the Fall of the Western Part The Roman Empire, inaugurated by Augustus in 27 BC, marked a new era of stability and expansion for Rome. Augustus, the first emperor, implemented profound reforms in administration and governance, stabilizing the empire after centuries of republic turmoil. He established a system where the emperor had supreme power while maintaining the facade of republican institutions. Under Augustus and his successors, the empire expanded to its greatest territorial extent, encompassing the entire Mediterranean basin and much of Western Europe. The Pax Romana, or Roman peace, a period during the 1st and 2nd centuries AD saw prosperity, cultural flourishing and significant architectural achievements like the Colosseum and Pantheon. Built under the Flavian emperors, the Colosseum could hold up to 80,000 spectators and was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles such as animal hunts, mock sea battles and executions. Following the establishment of the empire, Nero one of Rome's most infamous emperors, came to power in AD 54. Despite being credited with diplomatic and cultural achievements, his reign is often overshadowed by accusations of tyranny. The Great Fire of Rome in AD 64 is one of the most notorious events of his rule. Although Tacitus and other historians suggest Nero was not in Rome when the fire started and took measures to help the city recover, rumors persisted that he had the city set ablaze to make room for his grandiose architectural projects. This event exemplifies the complexity and often vilified character of Nero's rule, marking a significant chapter in the history of the Roman Empire. However, the 3rd century witnessed increased pressures on the empire. Economic troubles, military defeats and administrative challenges led to the crisis of the 3rd century, where the empire nearly collapsed under the strain of invasions, civil wars and economic downturn. In response, Emperor Diocletian ruled. 284 to 305 AD undertook comprehensive reforms he divided the empire in 286 AD into the Eastern and Western Roman empires, each ruled by a co-emperor under the Tetrarchy system. The Tetrarchy divided the empire into two distinct and separate administrations, each led by a senior emperor and a junior emperor. These pairs were known as Augusti and Caesaris. Diocletian himself took charge of the Eastern Roman Empire as an Augustus, with Galerius as his Caesar. In the West, Maximian was appointed as the other Augustus, with Constantius Chlorus as his Caesar. This was intended to make governance more efficient and manageable. Diocletian's reforms also included price controls to curb inflation and attempts to strengthen the economy. Diocletian's retirement and the subsequent rise of Constantine the Great brought further significant changes Constantine, who ruled from 306 to 337 AD, established Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, in 330 AD as a new Rome on the site of Byzantium. Constantinople's strategic location between Europe and Asia made it an ideal capital for the Eastern Empire, which increasingly diverged from the West in culture and interests. 
Constantine the Great was also the first Roman Emperor to convert to Christianity. His Edict of Milan in 313 AD granted religious tolerance throughout the empire and played a crucial role in the spread of Christianity. The division of the Roman Empire into East and West was finalized upon the death of Emperor Theodosius I in 395 AD. Theodosius was the last emperor to rule both the eastern and western halves of the empire as a unified state. His policies and leadership had managed to maintain a semblance of unity, but upon his death, the empire was officially divided between his two sons. The Western Roman Empire continued to face mounting difficulties, including economic decline and military setbacks. One of the most symbolic events of its deterioration was the sack of Rome by the Visigoths under King Alaric in 410 AD. It was the first time in 800 years that the city had fallen to a foreign enemy. This event marked a turning point in the decline of the Western Roman Empire and shocked the ancient world, dealing a significant psychological blow to the prestige of Rome. The final blow came in the form of invasions by various Germanic tribes and the Huns, led by Attila. Known as the Scourge of God, Attila led the Huns in numerous invasions across Europe. His campaigns contributed to the weakening of the Western Roman Empire, though he never managed to capture Rome itself. The destabilizing invasions culminated in 476 AD, when the last Roman Emperor of the West, Romulus Augustulus, was deposed by the Germanic chieftain Odoacer. This event is traditionally marked as the end of the Western Roman Empire, although the Eastern Roman Empire, or later described as the Byzantine Empire, would continue for another thousand years, preserving and transforming the Roman heritage. This empire, for which we have only used the name Byzantium since modern times, was also not the result of a division of the Roman Empire, because this empire was never divided. Its emperors could trace themselves back in unbroken tradition to Caesar and Augustus. Indeed, some of its institutions and traditions reached even further back to the beginnings of the Roman Republic. And so it was also natural that the Byzantines felt themselves to be Romans and labeled themselves as such. But every inhabitant of this empire, whether in the east or west, north or south, felt himself to be a Roman, a Romanus, or, as a Greek would have put it, a Romaios.